so thanks for having us today. So this session is called 50 Tips in 50 Minutes. We're hoping you get to about 70. That's our goal. Um, how many of you are going to try to follow along and take notes? Okay, don't bother, because you will not be able to keep up. Just close your laptops, enjoy the show, watch it on a recording. Um, so I'm Andy. This is Jeff, obviously. Um, he's, on a, he's on a stool to make himself feel taller. Um, <laughs> what was the other thing we were going to say? Oh, so, um, thank you to our scorekeepers up here, Sarah and Lorna. So what they're going to do is every time they see a tip, they're going to flip the chart so that we can keep track of how many tips we have along the way. If you guys see something you didn't know along the way that they don't keep score for, just clap or shout out or yell, whatever you want to do, let them know that they should be counting that. So there's lots of things. When we were rehearsing this with Andy Cockgrave, he told us he, we were actually doing a lot of things he didn't know along the way, not thinking that it was a tip. So if you learn something, shout out. Is that it? On your mark? No, you got to go to the next. Oh, yes, the right way. So um, the way that this is going to work is uh, I'm going to show you how to do things the right way, and Jeff is going to show you how to do things the better way. So you'll kind of hear some, some back and forth here. But anyway, and by the way, the postcard project is long done. So we're, no we're very glad that's over. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff knows enough disturbing facts about me now. OK, so I need somebody, Eva, you're in charge, to shout out when there's 10 minutes left. Just get up and scream when there's 10 minutes left. And then five minutes, so we have a warning. And then also, when time's up, just get up and tell us to stop. OK? And we're just going to stop wherever we are. So Jeff is going to go first. I'm going to go first. And I'm just going to start with something basic that I don't see a lot, which is colored tabs. You'll see that I'm using lots of colored tabs for these tips. So I thought I would just start off and show you. And uh, it's a great use. You can't do other customized colors uh, in the XML or anything. But you can change the okay. colors of the tabs. Um, the other one I want to show you is how to bring in data quickly. So what I want to do here is I'm just going to find a spreadsheet on my laptop here. And I'll just pick one. Let's just take the uh, copy and paste fruit. I'm just going to drag that right onto the canvas. You can drag that any place in Tableau. You can drag it uh, on your canvas once you have a viz up. You can drag it on the input data screen. So easy way to get the uh, data into Tableau, quick and fast one. Uh, next, I want to show you when you're actually viewing data. It gives you 10,000 by default. And so I'm going to go with the coffee chain data here. And right there is a button for view data. And it gives you 10,000 rows by default. Now, this data set only has 4248. So it's going to give you all of them. But if you go to the world indicators, and we use the world indicators data, we'll see that there's, um, there's 2,700. I can pick 100 in there. I can type 100. I can type 2,000. I can type 50,000 or 60,000 and get that data. All of that, I'm sure you know, is sortable. But you can also copy data out of here. You can copy, uh, click in the corner of the data set, and you can get all of your data with a control C. You can copy that data. You can actually open it up in Excel, and you can paste that data. And you have the world indicators right back and forth. So you can drag it in, and you can copy it right back out. And that's handy for at least small data sets. Let's move on and uh, want to show you copying chart data to Excel. You can actually do that too. Um, so I'll just get a, uh, just going to grab a random chart here and right clicking on that. You can copy here where it says cross tab and data. You can copy that. You could also hit control C right from that screen just to control C and you can get the data right for the specific chart that you're in. So you can get data in and out very, do, very quickly. Do you get minus points for using Excel? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> What would you like me to use? I can use email. OK. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so then let's go to uh, a couple quick formatting tips. Um, I don't like access lines everywhere. And uh, the, the new Tableau 10 formatting is beautiful, right? It has uh, much, uh, Andy even said, you don't even need some of these formatting tips anymore. But sometimes you need to do some fun s formatting tips. So for example, if you just want to create, you don't want borders around your charts, uh, and you just want to create an access line, your borders are there and your access line is there. Under access rulers, you can create an access ruler that will let you have an access ruler around the whole chart. So I'll make this really big so we can see it on the screen. But now you just have an X and Y black line and don't have uh, the other lines that are on the chart. And along those same lines, we can do that on a zero. In a zero, I don't want the X and uh, Y access lines. So I will get rid of them in this case and maybe add a zero line on the sheet and put it down. I'll make it red maybe for the middle. Make it really big so you can see it. But now we can have a zero line uh, the same way and have 
more clean, clean charts. Now, moving on to a dashboard. I call this the better way dashboard instead of the right way dashboard. Are you showing the right way? Um, sometimes you may want to add a line. There's no object for just adding a line across your dashboard. And so you'll see up here I have a line that I put under. That's not an underline in the text box. The text box is actually clean, and there's, there's nothing there. But there is a line underneath that object. It's right here. Um, if I can click on it there, not that. And that is a text box with color. And so what we do on that is, is just add, uh, I'll, I'll just add another one. How about we do that? Let's just go out here to the dashboard. We'll add a blank uh, floating text box, and we'll just put it right in the middle of our sheet, and uh, we'll just leave it blank, and then we're going to color it. And that's how we get the color of our line. So under formatting text objects, we can color that line to anything we want. And because it's a floating object, we can, we can control how thick or thin that line is, and we can move that line anywhere on our dashboard canvas. Um, to get really precise about your measurements for that, that's under your Layout tab, and you'll see a height. And you can take that height all the way down. You can make it three, and you make a really, really thin line. So you can put a, just a blank text box, basically, and you can put a line on your dashboard to separate uh, anything you want to separate. All right, and with, uh, let's see. Access lines with inline formula. I have two more, sorry. Uh, so bar chart here. Let me go to that dashboard. And one of the things that um, a lot of my students at the University of Cincinnati ask for is how to rotate that text. Sales is horizontal. And there is no way to really rotate that text in Tableau. So um, the easiest way to do that is to just go right up here. You can do an inline formula. You can just type right in the line, right where you want to do it. So right where sales are, just go in here and type Sales, just type the word sales in quotes, hit enter, and you have the word sales that's now right there in horizontal text. You can double click your access for a quick way to get to your access and delete the word sales, and now you have an access that isn't rotated. Very simple. Oh, they like that one. Okay. That was better than a golf clap, too. There. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Reusing charts. So. Unfortunately, when you're building a dashboard, let's go to the Better Way dashboard over here. That's um, just find my dashboard. Uh, you'll see in your dashboard window that you have a whole bunch of charts listed. But unfortunately, they don't give you the charts that you're already using when you go to a new dashboard. So you'll see I'm using bar chart map, bar chart map, and sales by time. And so if I want to go to a new map. I don't have those options. They're not there. The easiest way to do that is to duplicate your dashboard. Just go right click and click duplicate your sheet. You'll get a new dashboard and it's using the same sheets that your old dashboard was using. Even though they're not available to you, you still have an option to do that. And then you can format your new dashboard any way you want to format your new dashboard. Last but not least, aligning to grid and <coughs> floating objects. So I have two bar charts here that are floating, and uh, I want to align them, and I want to get them very precise. And so in this case, I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did on that line that I added to the dashboard. I'm going to do it under there where I can control the height and the width. I can also control the x and y. So where I was controlling the height of that object, now I'm going to control the Y placement. And so consumers is at Y229. If I want corporate, I can go up here and put that at 229, and I can get it exactly lined up where I want so that I have a perfect horizontal. Also, with the X, I think my dashboard layout is, goes to about 1,000 here. We can take the X. We can actually put it at 1,200. You can even put it off the canvas completely in the gray area, and it's off to the side. Great place for filters or navigation. So that could be a useful tip. And uh, designing to a grid, which is what I was doing there, sometimes you want to design to a grid with your dashboard. Uh, so I'm going to go back here. Let's go back to my dashboard. And I want to just... I want to move my things and my, my objects here, my sheets, into a grid. And so a quick and easy way to do that is to create grids that you can put on your dashboard as an image. So what I'm going to do is a floating image. I'm going to put my floating image right across the whole dashboard. So I'm going to put it up here. And I have pre-built grids. So say I want to do a two-by-two two grid. I'm going to put a two-by-two two grid on there. And I'm going to just cover my whole dashboard so that it covers everything. And then I have a grid that I can work with. Now, when you do that, make sure that you center your grid so that it, it, it's centered to your image. 
But now, the problem is, is I have a floating object above my dashboard. So how do I move things around behind the floating object that's on top? And so what you can do is, in your objects pane, you can go down and you can find all of your objects. For example, the map, profit by state, and I can size that, and I can move it right down to my grid and design to a grid. So I can design my whole dashboard with a nice grid. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Andy. All right. Good job, Jeff. And he's, he's kicking my ass. Um, what is, what's the score? 20. 20. 20. Jesus. Um, all right. I don't think I'm going to win. All right. So uh, this is a tip that I learned from Molly Monsi when I did train the trainer training. It's hard to say. Um, but if you have a, sometimes you'll receive a dashboard that's really gigantic because somebody designed it for their own screen. If you're ever unsure what size to create the dashboard, the easiest way to get it to fit the right size is to quickly change under here under the size menu is change it from fixed size to automatic and then back to fixed. And then when you view it, you'll get a perfectly sized dashboard. So that's tip number one. The second one. Uh, so, like, you guys might have not noticed what Jeff did there, but if you hold your shift key down, uh, you notice I have tiled selected down here on the bottom. Control and scroll, I've got tiled selected, and I want to float an image. So this particular dashboard, um, this is for a senior sales executive, and he likes having his picture on the upper right corner um, because he's he just loves himself. So I'm going to hold the shift key down, and I'm going to drag an image out, and you'll see it drags it in as a floating image. So I'm going to stick it up here in the upper right corner, and I'm going to search for that guy. And then I'm going to resize it and put it up here in the corner. So this is Jeff's favorite dashboard, so we want to make sure that he sees that up there. OK. Um, sometimes you'll receive a worksheet that looks like this. Has anybody seen anything like this? You know, you've got your, everybody's got their favorite fonts. Um, Times New Ro or not, uh, we've got uh, Comic Sans, things like that. But maybe, uh, maybe we actually really like this cursive here that's in the middle, but we don't like this really bold, ugly thing for our category. So I'm going to right click on those and choose Format. And the tip here is if I go into the pane, see this same thing happened last time? Oh, there it is. OK. So if you look under here, under the worksheet, you see how that is in bold? Whenever you're in the format, whenever you're in the format pane and you see something in bold, that means it's not the default. So you can just click on that, right click on it, and choose clear, and it'll get rid of all of those. So anytime you, go ahead, ladder. Yeah, let's see it, yeah, yeah, okay. So you'll also notice that there's this weird gray band in the middle here. Um, so I can go to my banding, and same thing here. You see my pane is bold, I'm gonna just clear that, clear the header, clear the level, and there you go. It starts to reset the dashboard. So you can, anytime you see something bold, you can change it. Um, I'm going to sneak in his tip because I asked him for a tip. The guy over there in the corner. What's your name? Mark. Mark. Mark asked how to do a bar chart inside of a bar chart. And Jeff told me I wasn't allowed to do anything on the fly, but I'm not going to listen to Jeff. So um, I'm going to look at, uh, let's say, Superstore sales. And we just want to do maybe 2015 versus 2014. Does that work for you? OK. So I'm going to just look at maybe just customer segment. I've got my 2015 sales, and I want to do a bar inside of a bar. So I'm going to take 2014 sales, and I'm going to drop it on top of this axis to do a combined X, or I'm sorry, yeah, that does a combined axis. Move measure names to color. That stacks them. Go up to stack marks, turn them off. And then I need to duplicate measure names onto the size shelf. And there we go. We have a bar inside of a bar, something like that. Now, these look like they're in reverse order. So I probably want 2015 as the skinny bar inside of 2014. So I'm going to just rearrange them like that. And there you go. So that's another tip. You're counting all these, Sarah, right? OK. I got to catch up. <laughs> all right, so here's another one. So this is, my, um, this is a product dashboard. It's just order quantity by different product types. And there's a couple of them that don't look quite right. Um, we've got uh, Paul Chapman and Bald Benoob uh, in here. And we know that those names aren't right, but we're not sure how to reset those. So I'm going to uh, go under to this product aliases here, and I'm going to ch choose my aliases. And you'll notice anything that doesn't have the original name has a star here in this middle section. I could clear them all by clicking clear aliases, but I don't want to do that. The only one I really want to change is bald Banoob. So I'm going to double, I'm just going to click in that cell, hit delete, hit enter, and OK, and it resets that one back to the defaults. So easy way to clean up aliases if you ever are unsure how those got the way they did. Um, 
All right, we've all seen scatter plots like this. So people love their trend lines and love um, all the multiple colors and things like that. I guess first I could show you when you have multiple colors, you can edit your trend line and untick the allow trend line per color to reduce it to a single trend line. But a really neat way to remove a trend line, there's several ways you could do it. You could right click and untick show trend lines. I don't really like doing it that way, so I'm just gonna drag it off instead. So uh, that's a neat little one. Learned that one the other day. All right, so multiple colors. Uh, so we, in this case, we want to basically create quadrants for things that are in the upper left, upper right, so on and so forth. So if I can remember, um, we've got, I've got two measures here. So let me just show you this first one here. I'm just gonna color code my discounts, whether they're high or low. So if I drag that onto the color shelf, you'll see you know, they're just two colors, one side or the other. But I also want to color code based on profit ratio color. So I could create one calculation that has all four of them, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drag profit ratio color to the detail, and then I'm going to click on this little button here, and I'm gonna choose color. And now we've got four colors. And we can, uh, so you can add as many things as you want to this. So, um, all right. Uh, okay, so calendars are a fantastic way to learn how to uh, use date parts. So I'm going to show you how to quickly build a calendar in Tableau. So calendars typically have weekdays going left to right. So on a PC, if you right click and drag the date on a Mac, you use the Alt command and drag that to the column shelf. I'm going to pick my weekdays. And then I'm going to go ahead and put in my rows, I'm going to put my week numbers and we get the markings of a calendar. I've already pre-filtered this to December. And let's say I want to just color this by profit ratio. So now we get a quick calendar like that. But what I really want is the day numbers on there as well. So I'm going to right click and drag order date to the label and go my day number. And it switches my view, but that's okay. I'm just gonna switch it back to squares and maybe add little white borders on them because I like to be able to see kind of the, and then I'm gonna format my uh, dates so they're on the upper right. From there, I'm just going to click on this and untick show header because I don't really wanna see the week numbers. So really quick way to build a calendar. Um, <clears throat> okay, where am I here? All right, so now that I have that calendar, when I hover over, you'll see I've got a mess of a tooltip. So I used to always just go into the tooltip and just manually start to delete things, but Carl Alchin showed me one day that I can actually just go in here and on any field, you can just untick include in tooltip. So I'm gonna untick all of these because I don't want those in my tooltip. What am I left with? Just my order date and my profit ratio. Super quick way to clean up your tooltips. <laughs> I really like that one. Okay, now since I, I changed the order a little bit, since Jeff told Joan how much I like sweets, I figured I should show you how to build a donut chart. So um, to do this, I'm going to just double click in the rows and I'm just gonna create a field that is the average of zero. Anybody know what the average of zero is? It's generally zero. Um, <laughs> okay, so I've got that. I'm gonna go ahead and go to that shelf then and make it a pie, because I like pie as well. Uh, and then I'm going to drag measure names, I'm sorry, measure values to the angle. And let's go ahead and flip this. So this is looking at the data schoolers and where they sit because I track where they sit. I'm creepy like that. And I'm gonna go, and then I'm gonna duplicate that field. I don't know if you guys saw how I did that. You hold your command key down and you can duplicate the field. It gives me two pies. And then this one I'm gonna actually switch to a circle. Get rid of measure names, get rid of measure values, and then dual access them. Remember to synchronize when you create dual axis. Go to your pie and make the pie a little bit bigger. All right, and then on my average, I'm going to just make this one white. And then I can go ahead and stick their name on the label if I want and maybe center align these. I'm not gonna worry about the formatting too much. So that's a quick way to build a donut chart. <clears throat> and then I would probably go ahead and hide these headers so now we have a nice little donuts. But one of the really fun things to do, now that I have a donut chart, um, I've got something like this. I might not want their names in the middle, I may want their pictures in the middle. That would be more fun, wouldn't it? So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the labels and let's just get rid of that. And I'm gonna, I'm going to change this to shape and I'm gonna go ahead 
and put the name on the shape shelf. And there we go. We have their pictures inside of that. And we can see how many donuts, or I'm sorry, where they, how, this is how many donuts they eat or where they sit. I don't remember, but uh, they ate a lot of donuts. <laughs> All right. Um, so the last one I want to show you in this section is how to sort marks on a map. So in this particular map, I want to be able to bring the outliers to the front. So whether it's a dark orange or a dark blue, I want those to be in front of all of the ones that are gray. So to do that, I'm going to just create a calculated field that is the absolute value of profit. So I'm just going to do ABS of profit and hit OK. And then I'm going to just go ahead and sort my zip codes by the absolute value of profit in descending order. And now all of the oranges, all of the outliers are in front of everything else. So a very simple way to use it for a calculation. And I think Jeff is now going to show a better way to do this. I think. I think, yeah. I showed you the right way. Some of those, though, have to watch in slow motion there, I think. We'll have that to slow tell. it down. Oh, all right, so I wanted to show you a, a great way to do sorting. Um, Jonathan Drummy just posted this not too long ago. You could check out his blog on that. But um, a real great way to do that, I'm going to duplicate just like Andy did. He, he, I'm using my control key on my uh, PC. Just drag it right next to it so that I have two charts. And then like I did in the inline formula for the access name, I'm going to double click on that and just put a negative sign in front of it. So just put a negative, negative sign. So now it's going exactly the opposite. And then I'm going to take that green pill. I'm going to make it discrete so that it'll become blue. And that blue pill, I'm going to move down in between market and product type. And when I do that, you'll see that the negative sum is sorting my bars. And so right now, it's sorting based on central and east, top down. But if I take that pill and I move it between product type and state, then I'm sorting within the next level. And so there's a quick way to do a nested sort. Now, that's fun, but let's just create two calculated fields for it. Down here, I have a calculated field that I'm going to edit here. I'll just show you what the calculation looks like. And you'll see if I'm sorting by market in my parameter, then I'm going to use the negative sum of sales. Otherwise, I'm just going to use zero. And so what that'll do is I have two of those calculations, one for market. I'll put that between market and product type. And I will take the other one, sort product type between product type and state. And now my parameter will flip the sorting based on how I want to sort. OK. I think these will be quick. So sometimes we want to move the access around on us. Right now we have 2011, 2012 down here at the bottom. We want to put it up in the top. One way that we can do that is under our analysis tab in table layouts kind of a strange place, in advanced, there is a box that you may not have seen. And there it says, show innermost level at the bottom. And if you uncheck that box and hit apply, all of your access will move up to the top. So that's a real quick one. You could do that another way, which is duplicating the field. I have, uh, whoop, I don't want to do that. Uh, here I have, go back one, sorry. Um, I have, I'm using year of order date. So instead of using order date, I made a copy of the order date. And when I make a copy of the field, then I would, can have up top and have it on the bottom. And when I do that, then I can go down here on the bottom and just get rid of show header. And I'm allowed to get rid of the header because they're two different pills. So it'll leave my header at the top. And so that's another way that you can move it around. Let's do the same thing with a line chart. Let's move our axis over to the right-hand side. Um, same sort of, same, really, really the same concept. You're just doing it with a, with a green pill now instead of a blue pill. So what I'm going to do is duplicate sales, drag it right next to itself. Then I'm going to make it a dual access. As Andy said, when you make a dual access, you always want to synchronize your access. Otherwise, you'll end up in all kinds of strange situations. And then I can just change the font color on this particular access to a white and then just make it go away. And now I can have my access. Oh, I did not duplicate. I'm sorry. I did not want to duplicate that. I wanted to use another pill. <clears throat> there you go. My first mistake in my tips. Do I get a deduction for that, Andy? Yeah. I, okay. <laughs> of course he's going to say yes. Well, I asked. needed to duplicate that pill. Uh, so moving on, uh, let me do single letters on month. You can do this with a blue pill or a green pill, two different types of dates. One's discrete, 
One is continuous. So first, with a blue pill, this is super simple. You can right-click on the date, and under your format, you'll go over here to your um, date right there, and it says first letter. Can't be any easier than that. When you go to first letter, you get a first letter. That's great. Now, if it's a green pill, that can be a little bit more problematic. So with a green pill, um, what you need to do is do the same thing, right? Click on it, format. But you're going to get a different formatting window under your dates. And it looks like your standard Excel formatting window. What you're going to do is go down to custom. And in your custom, you put five M's. One, two, three, four, five. And the five M's is a single month letter. And that'll give you a single month on a green pill. So you can actually have a single month on a green pill. Single letter month. Some knew that. OK. All right. Sometimes we don't like where the label is. I think this kind of started the thread of uh, tips. But if you click on a, uh, any label, you can actually move the label. You can put it anywhere you want. You can put the label in the middle of your chart. Um, so that's helpful if you're really trying to get um, you know, fine placement of your labels. You can move your labels around. So if you didn't know that one. That was supposed to be one of mine. Was it? Yeah. OK. Well, it's my point that I lost. <laughs> <laughs> When you use a green pill sometimes, uh, here you'll see I'm using a green pill with the single, single letter trick that I just showed you with the five M's. But the problem is, is that the data is first of the month. So my letter is showing at the first of the month. It's right at the beginning of the bar. Now, you know, you could fix that in your data, but you could also just do a little trick of just adding 15 days to the month. And then you can have your letter in the middle of the month and size the bars to where you want your bars and you have your letter in the middle of the month. All right, Andy showed, thank you. Andy showed uh, one way, the right way, I guess, of putting color on there. I'm going to show you a better way of using two colors. Um, in this case, I'm using category and I'm using ship mode. What I can do in this case is I can put both of them on at the same time. I should undo my folders here so I can see these. So there's my ship mode and my, there's ship mode. Where is category there up top? Thank you. And I'm going to do ship mode. And I'm going to hold down my control key with category, two pills. And I'm going to drag two pills on color. And guess what? I can get two pills on color, maybe. Ship mode <laughs> and category. Let's do that again on color. Why is that not working? It does work. Oh, wait a minute. I have this box up here. That box is getting in my way, isn't it? Let's try that again. He's doing this so I have less time. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll move on then. How about that? Okay. Unicode, Unicode characters. How many use Unicode characters? Not too many. OK, look all the things. That, everything up there, there is no shape. There is no custom shape on that page. That is all Unicode characters. Those are all text boxes. And in the text box, if you click on it, you can copy and paste these. Just control C. These are Unicode characters. And uh, Andy's going to show you a website, the right website, I guess. I have a PDF document that I'll link to in this for you. But I'm just going to show you some ways that you can use it. You can use it anywhere that you use text. And so I just did a couple examples for you. Here's profit is bad with an X mark on it. Here's profit is good with a check mark on it. Um, Andy, you can make a Mother's Day card if you wanted to. Um, so you could do that. And then even take a one. Let's just take this one right here. I'm going to copy this one into my clipboard, Control-C, and uh, go over here. And I can, I can actually put that in a, even in a name, Furniture Cohort. I will rename it and uh, just put a Unicode character right in the field there. So now Unicode character moves up. And I have a one right there for my field name. So all right. And then uh, last. Feel free to stop at some point. I will. Yeah. Um, making a change to a sheet. We've all made changes to something. I'm looking at sales. I built this sheet, and I want to put profit on it. Now I have profit on it. And then I realize, oh, I wanted my other sheet, and I want this sheet. How many people have done that? I want both sheets. So before you start hitting the back button, what you should do is just copy your sheet. Go down to the bottom, copy your sheet and then start hitting your back button. Go back to where you had sales, and then you can paste your sheet, and you'll have both sheets. Go down here and just click Paste Sheet, and you'll have your old sheet and your new sheet right next to each other, one with sales, one with profit, um, and it has a copy of it. So there you go. I'll turn it back right. over to you. Good stuff. 
Okay, let's see where we are here. So Jeff was showing you Unicode, and I'll show you the website that I use. Um, I'll tweet this out, but basically this, this I don't even know how to say the website name, so if anybody would like to translate, that'd be great. Um, but you can come in here, and there's tons and tons and tons of different Unicode shapes. So the way that I, one of the ways I like to use them is I like to copy the little bullet, and when I'm designing something for mobile, I'll go ahead and just paste these in here. Let me just paste in a couple different uh, bullets in there. And then I'll format my story and make the navigator. Let's make these like 14 maybe, something like that. Turn off my shading, make them a little bit smaller. Come on, stinker. There we go. And then when you design something for mobile, so I can go ahead, well, I can't really design this for mobile because it's story points. Uh, but let's go ahead and make it like 325 width, something like that. When you view it, this would be kind of similar to doing a mobile demo. You just have these nice little bullets across the top. So it makes it, it's really great for touch for mobile. <laughs> Credit for that one goes to Sophie Sparks. Okay, so sometimes what I like to do, uh, if I turn on my labels, you'll see they're on the ends, on the outsides of the bar. Sometimes I like them to be just on the inside of the bar instead, so let me undo that. And I'm going to go ahead and duplicate my sales field. But this one, I'm going to uh, first make it dual axis, and you'll see it makes them both um, dots. So I'm gonna go over here to my marks card, make the first one a bar, make the second one a Gantt bar, or it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I'll make it a Gantt bar for now. And then uh, I need to make, did I synchronize? It did not synchronize, okay. And then on my second shelf, I'm gonna go ahead and drag sales to the labels. And you'll see it sticks them on the outside, but what I can do now is I can align these to the left and then go ahead and make them white. Uh, now you'll notice that because I use Gantt bars, it throws the axis over there to, shows me a negative. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fix the start to zero and put the end as automatic. And there you go, now you have labels on the inside ends of your bars. <laughs> All right, so Jeff showed you something similar before uh, for sorting. I'm gonna show you a different way to do it. So I might wanna look at, uh, I might wanna sort this bar chart by percent of total profit. So I'm gonna right click on profit and go to quick table calc and make it a percent of total. And it doesn't look like anything changed, but it actually did. Uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this field, make it discrete. I don't know if I'm gonna get credit for this one, Jeff. And then I'm gonna go ahead and throw that there. And now we have, they're in descending order. Uh, I'm sorry, they're in ascending order. But if I want them to be in descending order, I'm just gonna double click on this field and throw a negative in front of the whole thing. And that'll switch it back to a green pill, but that's fine, I'll just switch it back to discrete. Move that to the left, and there you have descending. So very uh, easy way to use, because you can't sort by table calcs. So if you want to sort by a table calc, you have to do it that way. Um, okay, this is a pretty fun one. Uh, let's say that a lot of times what I want to do is I want to go ahead and zoom in on an axis. So I'll untick that include zero, and that lets you zoom in. But maybe I want the user to be able to choose whether they zoom or not. So I'm going to go ahead and create a parameter. And I'm just going to call it zoom. And let's just put really complicated things that say yes and no. So do I want to zoom? I'm gonna go ahead and show that parameter control. And then uh, I'm going to create a calculated field and I'll call it a zoom value. I'm gonna say if uh, zoom equals yes, then zero end. Notice I didn't put a else in there. You'll see why in a minute. So I've got this field called zoom value. I'm just gonna stick that in detail. I'm gonna to go to my analytics pane and I'm gonna throw a reference line on here for uh, the average order quantity, order quantity. And I'm gonna set it based on my zoom value. I'm gonna make it transparent and turn off recalc. And oops, I need to also, uh, let me edit that again, turn off the label, hit okay. And because I said to zoom, I think I've got it backwards. I've got my yes and no backwards, but you get the idea. So when I choose to, I got to fix that because that will irritate the crap out of me. Uh, <laughs> so let's say no. Okay, there we go. So now when they say don't zoom, you see you just, it includes the zero on the axis. If I choose zoom, it zooms in. So really cool way to allow your users to zoom in and out. 
Um, okay, so sometimes uh, you want to create a diverging bar chart. Some people call it a bikini chart. Uh, <clears throat> you'll see why in a second. Uh, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to just going to take, this is looking at uh, the population, uh, population in Bermuda from 1911 all the way up to 2010. And I'm going to go ahead and stick the males over here on there. And then I'm going to take female and put that uh, up here as well. And you see I've got, uh, they're, they're both going the same direction. I'm going to go ahead and put measure names on color so they're different colors. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I'm, no, I don't, women are not negative. I'll make the men negative. <laughs> that was a good strategy there, wasn't it? That was. Yeah, that was smart. Almost, I almost tripped up there. Go for the women. So now you can see we've got a diverging bar chart. But one of the problems is uh, we see these negatives. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on this axis. And first off, I'm going to remove the uh, labels from both of these. And then I'm going to format this axis. And I'm going to go to my scale. I'm going to first set it to custom number because I can never remember how to do this. Go to custom. And then I'm going to copy that, put a semicolon, and then paste it. And you see I get all positive numbers now going both directions. So uh, they don't have Ks, but I could fix that. I just don't feel like it. So that's an <coughs> easy way to create a diverging bar chart. Or see, it kind of looks, if I turned it upside down, let me sort this in the opposite direction. Sort. Descending. There you go. Now it looks like a bikini. So that, that's not a tip. <laughs> that doesn't count. All right. So Jeff showed you access at the top, and I don't remember what this tip was for. Um, I really, I'd really like to see my axis at the top of my chart. OK, so we will skip that one, because I don't remember what that one is. So uh, I'm going to go ahead, and now I'm going to create a DNA chart, or it's, sometimes it's called a barbell chart. And all I want to look at is uh, maybe for each uh, of the last two seasons, how a team did. So um, actually, let's do goals for and then goals against. That might be easier. So I'm going to take goals for and drop that onto the columns. Take goals against and, and uh, put that on the uh, same axis to give me a shared axis view. I'm going to take measure names and move that to color. Make them circles. And then I'm going to go ahead and duplicate my measure values and then make a dual axis. So you notice I'm doing different ways to do dual axis because I'm hoping I get extra tips. But, uh, and then I'm going to make this one a line. And you'll see my line goes all batshit crazy now. So I'm going to take measure names and move that to the path shelf. And now you have a DNA chart. Move those to the back, and you're done. All right. So similar to a DNA chart is a slope graph. So in this case, I want to look at maybe how a team did over the last two seasons. And I think I do have season filtered already. So let's go ahead and take season and put that in the columns. And let's take their points totals and put that in the rows. And when I put the team name onto detail, you'll see it just divides up my chart. Well, I'm going to go ahead and make these lines. And now you automatically have a, oh, and if you do control command and right key, you can make the viz bigger. So credit there, yeah, yeah. And I'm going to click on the color shelf and throw little dots on the end. And uh, that's how you do a DNA chart. Or I'm sorry, a slope graph. Uh, all right, so now what I want to do is I want to uh, color this slope graph. So. Uh, how did I do this? OK, so I created a set that has whether a team has more points or less. So I'm just going to drag that to color. And now we've got uh, multiple. Uh, we, can, we can highlight just the teams that have improved versus the previous season. I can go ahead and turn my labels on. And I like my labels to match my mark colors, so I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to go ahead and make these a little bit smaller. So you get something like that. Now, like Jeff showed you, there's some overlapping here. So I'm going to go ahead and allow my overlaps. And then I can rearrange these like Jeff did as well. So I can just make them nice and neat right next to the numbers. So something like that. OK. So I don't get credit for that one because you did I that one not. already. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we should both get half a point. Can you rip one of those in half? <laughs> OK. So uh, specific mark labels. So in this case, what I might want to do is only show the mark labels for some of the marks. So there's two different ways you can do this. Um, the first way is I could go ahead and hide my mark labels just by unticking that. And let's say that I want to show just the green ones. So I'm going to highlight just the green circles. And I'll do just the ones on the end for now. 
And I can then, when I hover right click on one of those, I can do mark label always show. And now I have the labels for just those four points. So that's a pretty neat one. You like that one? Good, good, good. Golf, golf clap. Uh, another way to do that is through a calculation. So I'm just going to create a calculated field. I'm going to say points to show. I'm going to say if more points than points end. So that's going to return a null if it fails. So I'm going to do points to show, put that on color. Oh, wah, wah, wah. on to label. And now you see I only get them on the green lines then. So you can use a set and a calculation to do that for you. All right, and the last one in this, in this section is to create um, vertical lines in your slope graphs. So uh, sometimes I'll like to have a line that kind of draws and connects all these dots together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make my season, uh, let's see, I want to make this, um, nope, uh, I'm failing here miserably. Uh, sugar snacks. I forget how to do this. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate points. I'm going to see if I can figure this out on the fly. So I've got points. I'm going to take that off, take that off, and that's the wrong field. So I'm going to remove that because I screwed up. And I'm just going to call this zero, the average of zero. And if this doesn't work, I will concede that I did it wrong. Uh, but I'm going to go to my average of zero and make this a bar. Uh, and then I need to size it. And I did this wrong. So we will skip that one and go <laughs> on. I will, I will take a negative for that one, Jeff. All right. All right. Come back and pick it up. Because that's what I'm going to do. I drew a blank. Well, I had, so I, I had my zoom up here, and I couldn't drag pills. So I'm going to go back and pick that up where I had ship mode. How much I, time we've left? Oh. Ten minutes, 10 and, 20 minutes and twenty okay. seconds. We're at fifth. Thank you very much. All right. So, if you recall, what I was uh, doing before was um, going to do ship mode and category. I take both of those pills and highlight them and drag them onto color. I'll have two blue pills on color now. Now that kind of looks funny because that's not the color that I'm looking for. So, what I'm going to do is bring. I'm just going to drag the one pill ahead of the other pill. That didn't work. Let's do that again. <laughs> Make sure I drag one down or one up. And now I have a light to dark by ship mode, and I have the categorical color by the category. So blue shipping and so on there. And now we're going to get fast because we've been going so slow. Um, so you can drag the access to color. Go down here to my X axis, and I can put it on color. There's a quick way to get color. I just moved quantity to color. You can do that on any axis. You could do that on your Y axis or your X axis. I could take category over here, and I could put category on color. I could just drag it, just like dragging a pill. Uh, so there's a fast way to do color for you. Another one, um, this came up in, in my office, actually. We're trying to do a, a, a dual color area chart where you have one color above the zero line and one below the zero line. And that's actually harder than it looks because when you do it, um, it, it comes out with a, uh, a funky color. Like here is a line chart um, example where because it's a green pill that you have on your color, it goes from orange to blue. It, can, it, it, it moves as it goes across the line, not above zero or below zero. Um, and so the way to do this is to create a dual access. You'll see that I have profit up there uh, twice. So we take profit, we put profit up there a second time, and by having profit up there a second time, I get a dual access. Um, I can create a dual access, and I can change the color of one. For example, I could create the bottom one here. And then when I put them on a dual access, I can adjust the access, right click here and edit my access. I can have one start below zero and stop at zero. There's the bottom, and oh. do the same thing on the top where I edit the axis and say one starts at zero and goes above zero. So there's the top, and now we have that. That's a good one. You just snuck that one in. I, I didn't. That was just been in there the I whole time. I didn't see that one before. <laughs> I'm going to jump to some quick mapping tips. Everybody likes Mapbox, uh, but I'm going to just finish up here with my last few minutes and then turn it over to Andy. So I want to create some minimalistic maps where I don't have all the map layers in Tableau. And so what I did is uh, just have a, a bunch of different ones here. What we're going to do when we right click uh, nope, up on our map, we're going to go to map layers. And uh, you'll see that we have base here. We have our styles, light, 
dark, normal, those are all there, and we have our various lines that we can put on there. Well, what I'm gonna do is a combination of taking off the base and changing the pane color. So this is a map without map box. This is done with just native maps in Tableau. What I've done here is you'll see that I took the base off, I've, con I've added the country region so that I have the country region, but the trick here is under formatting the maps, is under your shading, it's your pane shading. And so that pane shading controls the color of your map. I can have a brown map, I could have a gray map, I could have a blue map, I could have whatever color map. So just a great way to, to do that. <clears throat> and then we can add grid lines, of course, because we can control borders and we can control grid lines. And um, this particular one, I like this one, where we, this, is, this isn't a dual access. This is a single access chart here. So I just have latitude and longitude on that. Uh, and what I've done is borders, you'll see on, even the color is empty here. I've done all this with just the formatting. So when you go to format, you'll see that the shading in the background is done with blue. Doing with a dual access map, if I do, I, I copy longitude. We've watched us duplicate fields up here. If I do that, then I can actually add state borders because with the dual access, I get two marks cards. So in that case, I can put one marks card and I can go in here to color and I can change the color on the one marks card versus the other marks card. So that gives me more ability to mess with the states and borders on there. And uh, let's see, I will finish with one last one. We have, Andy's been showing you throughout this talk the right way of mapping. And so we found an address the right way in Humble, Texas. That's 3027 right way, Humble, Texas, just a couple hours uh, east of here, I think. I like this map. This is your basic black map in Tableau. Um, but the problem for me is that the lines are really gray. And so using the combination of things that I just showed you, what we can do is get a high contrast map, uh, which in Cincinnati, Ohio, I found the better way road. And, uh, how did we do that? We just did a combination of those things that I just showed you. So first what we're gonna do is we're gonna take off the base, we go up to the map and go to the layers and make sure that our base map is off because if our base map is on, the whole Tableau map is gonna show. So we have to get rid of the base map. We have to make sure our streets are there. The other trick is to go up to style and make sure you're using light. It's counterintuitive because if you go dark, you get the dark lines on the map and you don't get the contrast. So you want the dark map with the color using the pane and you want the light style to show the contrast in the roads. All right, five minutes, Andy, you're All right. last. All right, good. Thank you, Jeff. All right, I'm gonna skip that one. Uh, some, so Jeff showed you guys how to, how to throw a measure, a discrete measure in between here. You can also, I'm gonna go ahead and pick uh, region and customer segment and I'm gonna right click and create a combined field. And it's called region and customer segment. I'm gonna stick that one in the middle. And then I can go ahead and sort by that field, descending by sales. And that's another way to get a nested sort. So I can untick the show header. So Jeff's is a little more flexible, but this is another way to do it. Okay, uh, this is a pretty fun one. So I, in this case, I may want to go ahead and create an area chart. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my, this is, uh, Let's switch this to an area chart, and you get, helps if I pick, I did click area, didn't I? Okay, so there we go, so we have an area chart here, but one of the things we, uh, I wanna do is I wanna pull a line that goes, uh, that goes across this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, duplicate the uh, pill. I'm gonna go ahead and make this one a line, and maybe make it, let's go ahead and make it, come on. Let's go, oops, sorry, wrong, wrong one. Oh, let's just leave it like that, what the hell. I'm gonna go ahead and make that one dual axis and synchronize, and now you can have a nice line on top of your area chart. So, nice way to do dual axis. Huh? How'd you make that dual axis? How did I make it dual axis? Yeah, I thought uh, that was a tip. I just write, what did, how did I do it? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Never mind. He I have like 10, I think I just no dragged credit. it over to here. And made it, <laughs> yeah, I think I did it like that. Okay, anyway, sometimes you do things without thinking. Um, so Jeff showed you how he likes to do dashboard divi uh, dividers, but I'm gonna show you the better way, uh, or the, <laughs> the, right way. the right way. Yeah, so I actually like to use images instead. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag an image in the middle here, and I go to my Tableau repository, and I like to, maybe I wanna put a thin dashed line in the middle, and there you go. So these are just images I have saved on my computer. This works really well for mobile because it helps split up the visualization. So now when you're scrolling on a mobile device, you can see there's natural breaks 
in the visualization and helps split things up. So that's another way to do dashboard dividers. Um, one thing that I don't think a lot of people know how to do is how to use Boolean calculations. So I'm going to show you that real quick. What I want to do here is, yes, we could turn on the highlighter and type in, you know, Alabama. And you can see that get highlighted. But that's not really what I want to do. Uh, that's, I think that's cheating. Um, so <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and create a parameter based on my state field. So I'm going to right-click on state, choose create parameter. And the great thing about that is it auto-populates the whole thing. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually, let's clear that first. I'm going to say none, because I'm going to show you a bonus tip here. And then I'm going to do at, come on, stinker, add from field. Uh, which data set is this? Average tuition state. And that populates everything. And then I'm going to go ahead and show that. And now, um, you know, my parameter doesn't do anything. That's great, because I haven't told Tableau what to do with it. So now I'm going to create a calculated field. That's my state highlighter. And I'm just going to say my state parameter, or state equals state parameter, and hit OK. And that results in a true-false calculation. That's a Boolean. Drag that to my color. And then I'm going to reverse those. So now the orange one comes to the front. Maybe I'll make this one a lighter gray so you can see it a little bit better. And now as I pick a state, you can see it gets highlighted. If I pick none, then they're all shaded the same color. So. <clears throat> all right. Another common mistake I see people make is they have something like, uh, which customers do we fleece the most here? Um, so uh, these are our top 10 customers that we steal the most money from. And, but I have an action filter set up on this monthly sales. So let me go ahead and turn that filter on by clicking the little, I don't know if you guys knew that, you can click on the little filter, the tiniest icon on the planet. If you can click it, then it works. Um, <laughs> but I might want to know, well, what are the top, what are the top 10 customers that I fleeced the most in my most recent month? So I'm going to go ahead and click on December and look at that. My customer list is gone. Well, that's because you're using a top 10 filter. So if I go to this sheet, what you need to do is, because my customer name, if I show you this filter, you'll see, oops, sorry, wrong thing. If I edit the filter, you'll see that I have a top 10 filter on here. Well, top, whenever you have a top or bottom filter, all of your other dimensions that are in your filters have to be in context. So I'm going to go to my uh, action, and there we go. Now I can go, and no matter where I click, I will get my top 10. And we are out of time. time. How do we do? So, is it a tie? It didn't end in a tie, I hope. It didn't. Yes! I won. <laughs> yes. So, 86 tips. Um, that's it. All right. Good job. Thank you. And uh, special thanks to our scorekeepers, and special thanks to all of you guys for inspiring us and helping us create these tips. So, thank you very much.